Good morning fellow option traders. This is Jeff and welcome to the daily scan for Wednesday, June 11th, 2014. Okay, no uh, breaking news to go over from yesterday and for today, scheduled market affecting announcements, EIA Petroleum Status Report at 1030 and the Treasury Budget at 2 p.m. And that's about it. All right, let's take a look at what happened over in Asia. Uh, pretty mixed, some bullish, some bearish, not uh, greatly so. But in Europe, or to the east, we're looking at some pretty solidly bearish numbers here. So this is uh, might be a sign of what's happening here with our futures and if you look at it yes that is what things are looking at like for our futures gold is up to 1262 up quite a bit uh, since it dropped below 1250 and oil is at 10464 there must be something going on that's not in the news that they're not they're just not reporting We'll have to see what happens there. Okay, and one thing I want to take a look at right quick is the futures charts. Okay, so this is the Dow. Um, came up here with uh, you know a bunch of new highs here, and is stalled right now. That, that's happened before, but we get a stall now and a pullback, at least for today. Looking at the S&P 500 futures, uh, same story, stalled at this new high and a considerably large red calendar for today, candle for today. And the NASDAQ 100, same thing, stalled at this new high, not all that bad from the size of the candle perspective probably something like apples probably holding it up uh, TF which is the Russell 2000 this is not a new high here the new high was back way back here in March and it's been uh, struggling pretty much too and remember the Russell 2000 usually is an advanced indicator of market direction so it's been struggling since March and the high was at 12.12 and we're only at uh, 11.67 right now just some stuff to take into consideration okay so yesterday didn't do a darn thing um, none of the 20 deltas that we had listed came through at all. So when I looked at 3.30, nothing was happening. Everything was pretty looking pretty flat. I just shut her down and went out and did some yard work. Okay, let's take a look at the A-plus list and just get going and maybe keep her short today. Okay, Apple... Um, looked really good at the open and then struggled all day uh, but still we have a green stochastic here but our target down here we're still patiently waiting for Apple to come down and give us an entry if it's going to give us an entry provided of course this uh, crazy um, trend here continues there's not a lot of momentum down here, which is kind of surprising to me. I am, I'm not sure if the data here is all good, but all these prices have been corrected on the Thinkorswim platform, and probably most other charting systems will have these prices corrected. They just take all these prices and divide by 7. And you can tell that. <laughs> just, I was looking uh, at strikes yesterday on Apple and 
here's something interesting. Look at these strikes. $90.36, $90.71, and they're trading them. I mean, yesterday there was huge volume uh, on these, and there's huge open interest, and that's because all those old strikes from before the split, divided by 7, you come up with these numbers. So it's a little crazy. I'm not sure. Probably have to wait for new issues. You know, like a new month to come out to get rid of that. And that won't be until um, expiration. Yeah, they're still there. Um, maybe some of these new weeklies. We'll look this Thursday. Uh, whoa, where'd that come from? Oh, these are the um, smaller. This is one-tenth of Apple. I'm not sure what's going on there. I just stay away from those. We still have them here. So, um, yeah, these have not been corrected yet. So I'm probably when a new uh, expiration comes out, they'll be fixed, I would think. All right. Um, we did look at the chart. We're still waiting on that one. We have to be patient right now. I think that there's some, um, just some indecision in the market. So we have to be careful and be patient. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we're looking for a bullish play here on Amazon with a bull put. Boeing was looking pretty good. Yesterday it looked like as though um, it's going to come down here and touch our entry point. Baidu is doing very well. Pretty happy with it. No indication of what might be happening today. I want to um, also let you know that um, if the overall market is starting to pull back and you have stocks that are in an uptrend, say like Celgene here, it's in an uptrend, and uh, but the general market is pulling back, you kind of have to keep that in mind if you're going to be doing a 50 delta trade on, or any trade on these, because the market, there's not many stocks that really move contrary to the market. Uh, consistently. Eventually they succumb to the overall trend and direction of the market. So keep that in mind. That's what why we always like to look at the major indexes. And really, I mean, that's good enough for the most part. And also keep in mind the Russell 2000 and which direction it is heading. Keep that in mind. So anyway, on Celgene, uh, all these stocks are in an uptrend. If we, if we're coming into a, another correction here, we must keep that in mind. Don't forget about that. So, it'll, as an example, in the case of Celgene, if it does come down here and give us an entry, we have to be very careful if the overall market is still pulling back, because eventually. Like I said, it will succumb to the, the index, I guess you could say. At least the ones that we're looking at. I don't know of any others that just shrug off whatever direction the market might be going. Okay, uh, Chipotle. Same thing, pretty much the same story. This is a new um, uptrend. A new bull run, which uh, looking at the 50, it wants to turn over again. So those are things we have to keep in mind. Costco. Okay, we are down here. This is a setup in Costco. But we have to be careful. This is not a strong trend, and it's kind of a new trend. 
So this is the time to be cool. This is, uh, by the way, almost looking like an entry for a uh, bear call. But that would be a little bit too contrary for my taste. So let's take a look down here and we'll see if we're um, going to be doing... I'm a little concerned about the MACD here. So I have to make sh see if uh, we're willing to do a 50 delta or if a 20 might be more appropriate. CVX. We have anything going with them lately? Nope. Uh, okay, screaming in a very strong uptrend here over the last week. Still waiting for it to come to our target. I already kind of looked at the Dow when we looked at the futures. Um, and this is just for observation purposes. Igor. Alright, nice strong uptrend. Getting close to a setup here. FedEx. We're in a 50 delta trade on FedEx. We'll see how contrary to the market FedEx is going to be or if it's going to bite me in the butt. We'll just have to see. F5 Networks. Uh, still waiting for that one to... I didn't pull out on it yesterday and I'm not going to pull out on it today either, but I will make a note. Just to keep an eye on it. All right, gold had a nice pop yesterday to it. We may get another one today. Good thing kept us out. Our indicators kept us out of this. Google and eh, struggling a little bit, maybe. Um, came out of its uh, downtrend and it may be re-entering into it. I have to keep an eye on that. Was not able to come up with a new high. We have a lower high here, which looks like a high anyway. You know, another day is going to tell if price comes in lower than this. This would be a new high here. Or not a new high. This would be the high, which is lower than the previous high. So that's something to also keep in mind. LinkedIn. Ooh, we had a very good day yesterday. Did it not? Wow. That's just uh, screaming. That's amazing. Where are we here? Well, we're still trying to figure out what this thing is doing along with a couple other ones, like I think Tesla. Uh, 3M finally uh, ran out of gas here with a doji. A doji with a new high might say that uh, that there might be a change coming. But I don't know about a doji. This is a perfect doji. <laughs> it's blue. So you know that the open is the same as the close. It doesn't happen very often. Uh, but that's interesting. Well, anyway, regardless, we're still waiting to see what's going to happen when the stochastic gets down here. NDX. Um, same thing. We're looking for a 20 delta down here. No need to dwell on it any more than we need to. Netflix uh, getting very close to a setup, but not there yet. Looking very weak. Uh, Priceline. They were on our uh, chart yesterday. We were looking for a little bit of a pop here for a 20 delta trade. Never happened. I think Priceline, there's people bailing on Priceline. That's most definite. Uh, Russell. Okay. Um, what would you do with the Russell? Well, you know, if you wanted to just keep playing this, I would say 
I'm putting this down for a 20 delta today. Um, and the reason is, is the consolidation along here. This really is kind of a consolidation. And this is just kind of a recent little bump up here. So I'm looking to do uh, 20 delta here. Um, and see what expiration would I pick. Probably the normal monthly expiration. So if we're looking at this month, uh, we would be looking at, say, something around 1195, which is up here. Or if we went out to the next month, if we went out to July, we could get something around uh, 1220. So let's just take a quick peek at that. If we did that, we would collect, that is a, oh, right now at the moment, that's a 5 to 1 risk reward. Look at the risk profile. We're risking 400 to make 100. But if we look at the total spread, which is 5, and we're getting 100 bucks, then that, that meets our criteria pretty nicely. And what are we doing here? We're $1.83 a day on this. So let's say it was to spend the next week pulling back. So we'll move our time up here to next Wednesday. And it looks like as though we're only going to make like $14.19. So the, the, the kind of the risk here is that the uh, strike that is closest to in the money, if we get an increase in volatility, is the one that is going to increase in price a little bit faster. As you can see here, the 1220 has an IV of 14.52, uh, 1225 is 14.35, which is a little bit less. So we're getting a little bit further out of the money. IV is, is uh, shrinking a tad. And you can see it here. That IV increases as you get closer to in the money. So if price starts pulling back, generally as a rule, volatility increases, which means that the value of the short strike starts going up a little bit faster than the long strike, which is why when you look at the risk profile, and even though price may be moving down in this direction, the white line is going to be sinking down closer to um, the zero line here. And that and that's the reason why um, sometimes, you know, when when even though the stock is moving in the direction that you want it to, uh, especially on um, bear calls when you do uh, spreads like that uh, takes a little bit longer for those to give you the profit that you would sort of expect so theta starts to shrink a little bit as IV increases um, and I, know, I might be able to demonstrate that uh, sometime in the future but not today I didn't want to spend too much time on it but just uh, wanted to let you know that that's something that could happen to you. So if you go up here and you want to do a 1220 up here with an expiration of July, that it's going to take it probably quite a long time to become profitable, at least to a point where you're willing to exit the trade and you're happy with your profits, say at a 50% level it's going to become much more difficult. So if you wanted to get to a 50% level on this particular trade, let's look at June 2nd. Yeah, we're at about 50% right there. $54.39, or theta is up to $3.62 a day. So it's going to eat into your, it's going to take a long time for you to become profitable on these. Now the reason why I picked that is also because there's not a lot of 
open interest. <clears throat> Excuse me, say for instance if we wanted to do, well let's look at a quarterly. There's a fair amount of open interest on quarterlies. So if you were to go to a 20 delta, you would have to probably go to like this 1200 here, which probably wouldn't be too bad of a trade. Uh, and this is a $10 spread with a 220 credit, which fits our criteria. That would be it would be coming in here at the 1200, which is up here. And you can see that, all right, where's our theta here? Let me reset the parameters here. Okay, so your theta is now at 608. So this is going to become profitable much quicker. Uh, and IV is probably pretty much comparable to the other ones. So, something to keep in mind. I'm not sure exactly what I would do with this particular one. Same thing maybe with SPX, although SPX is in a much stronger trend than the Russell, than RUT. Um, so, we're just waiting for our normal target down here, because that's in a pretty heavy trend, I guess you could say. Let's take a look at TLT. Oops. Not looking good here. I'm glad we don't have a trade on. We'll have to see what happens today if the market does um, close lower than before. Tesla, like I said, we're still trying to figure out what's going on there. And last but not least is Visa. Um, we have a non-confirmed hook here. So we have a red on the stochastic but our MACD is still green so if we were looking to do a 20 delta we just don't have the data right now it looks like the Zoe it's going to open down just a bit so we might be able to do an iron condor on that so I'm putting that in my 20 delta list and that's it just uh, three for today set up on Costco for a We'll put in RUT and Visa both for bear calls with a 20 delta, which may be condorized sometime in the future. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and happy trading.